Yeah, man, hit it up. Oh, shimmy, Ooh. shimmy, shake, shake. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa pop, my grandma would say. <laughs> we got a little brake jutter issue with our super duty here, man. Little, man. Yeah, we Ooh. got some problems with the binders, but you know what? We got a brand new tool in the shop. We know how to fix it, so why don't you guys roll with us? It's super duty fix it day. You got your side lined up? Yeah, man. It's just under the oil pan, right where it should be. Yeah, the oil <laughs> pan. Maybe not. All right, we got our beast. A 2012, a late build in 11, F-250, yeah. super duty. Yeah, man. You can tell he's done a lot of towing, maybe even a little four-wheeling. He's put it through the ringer. Darren, the guy that owns his truck, told us it had a little brake shutter, and you could really feel it when you're driving it. Yeah. Now, a lot of people think it's just from the rotor getting hot, warping. Yeah but not necessarily the case. Modern rotor construction materials are pretty good. You probably have some stack up issues because you got the spindle itself, the bearings, the hub, all these things made it to the rotor. So even if you have a good clean cut rotor, it yeah. doesn't necessarily mean the whole system is nice and square and running right. true. But that's why we're here to diagnose that problem. So we're gonna get it up on the lift, get the wheels off, and we got some great new toys to show you as well. Yeah. Let's get it up in the air. Now the wheel off, I can snug my rotor up to the hub, and I've got a dial indicator over here connected to my upright, and I can measure the run out. So how much wobble is there in the surface of this rotor? Now if I rotate this thing around a little bit, you can see the needle move, 5, 10, 15, 16 thousandths. So I've got run out of about 16 thousandths. Now depending on the vehicle, it might be as low as one to maybe four thousandths kind of spec from the OE. So we're definitely out. Now, if I take this rotor and I just put it on a lathe and I turn it nice and true, if I've got any sort of tolerance stack up in my bearings and my hub, maybe I hit a huge pothole, there's a slight deviation, this perfectly true rotor now on this wobbly assembly is gonna still wobble once I put it together. And when I try to clamp on it with those fixed pads, that's what gives you that shudder, that kind of you know, unsettling feeling when you hit your brake. So now, we're just going to show you a few more negative impacts of a situation like this, and we'll show you how you can fix it. Okay, now what Kev was talking about is a great little demonstration right here. We have two machined rotors, and you can see, one, kind of the effect of the stack tolerances. So you can imagine if you have brake pads here and they're trying to squeeze on this guy, you're going to have premature wear on certain parts of it. You're going to have what's called brake pad kickback, where it kicks the actual cylinder back into the caliper. And then the next time you go to stop, you have to make up all that volume to get the pads clamped back onto the rotor. So a lot of times that will extend the braking on your truck. You want to shorten that, you want to keep the contact pad true and against it with this little machine right here. Yeah, now this is the trick. Now this is the Pro Cut system. This is the Warthog A10. Now what's really cool about it, I mean you can see that right over here is kind of standard looking for a yeah. brake lathe. So your rotor is going to run through here, but it's not going to be out here in space. We're actually going to roll this guy right over yeah. to the actual wheel hub and rotor assembly and we're going to take an adapter and we're going to bolt these guys together so this is all one unit so now we're turning the actual rotor on the assembly and getting that nice true cut so we're gonna get this thing set up pull the caliper off show you how easy it is to use it so you can turn cars around all day long in your shop sweet how do you choose the right spray to clean the electronic parts of your car Use CRC Electromotive Electronic Parts Cleaner when rebuilding parts like alternators, starters, or generators. CRC Electromotive works great on shop equipment too, like air tools, battery chargers, or grinder motors. This non-flammable, non-conductive, aggressive cleaner quickly removes grease, oil, and dirt from motor parts and equipment without leaving a residue. For more sensitive equipment or electronics with plastic housing, choose CRC QD Electronic Cleaner. This precision cleaner cleans circuit boards, electronics, contacts, connectors, and relay switches and helps prevent contact failure. It's perfect for small tight places where you can't hand burnish electrical contact points. CRC QD electronic cleaner is quick drying, safe on plastics, and leaves no residue. This tip is brought to you by CRC Industries, the makers of Brake Clean, the number one brake parts cleaner.
Hey guys, welcome back. Now, as you know, we're on our F-250. Darren let us have it, and it had a lot of brake shutter, if you will, a lot of that mm, feeling the pedal. So now we're addressing it with our Pro Cut device right here. Kind of cool. Yeah, let me show you how easy it is to set it up. Now we bolt on an adapter. We just ran four lug nuts down, hand tight, about 25, 30 foot pounds. Yep. Now this guy just shoves right in. It's got one sort of threaded shaft that connects it. Now you're ready to go. Yeah, man. So with that said, what we're going to do is we're going to get any run out that's in this assembly. So there's a really clever head mechanism inside here <laughs> that's going to detect that sort of run out between the two, get those guys to align. So now we've got a perfect setup to make a real clean, true cut. All right, now you can see a little bit of motion here. Now some of that is going to get taken up here when I hit my start button. You hear that clicking? Yeah. That's this mechanism dialing itself in. Now the other bit of motion is kind of interesting is it's doing a little bit of an oscillation so you have a, a non sort of directional cut because yeah. most of you guys know when you cut a brake ro rotor you got this linear cut along the outside surface and you go back with sort of a you know a scotch bright and a grinder and you put swirl patterns in here but with this guy we can skip all that because of the way it's set up. Now the cool thing with this is it's super adjustable so I'm going to run it in just a little bit make a scratch test, right? About right there, you think? That's good. Okay, I can dial it in here on the back one. You'll hear it. You hear how it's just caught in the high spot. Yeah, again. Now we're gonna do the front. Here, you'll see it as soon as it kisses it. There you go. So See how we're only just kind of hitting the high spot. So that's what we're trying to get rid of. And this is what your brake pad is doing right here. That's, yep. what, it's, that's what it's fighting against. So right. now I'll run this guy all the way in. Oh. And you can see we've got the dial indicator over here just swinging violently. And as this thing cuts, obviously it's going to true that out. And we hopefully we'll see this dial indicator just kind of go back towards zero. And tighten this guy down, and then comes with the silencer, right, and the shield. It's going to drop this guy right in here, right in there, and then push that in. We're good to go. Nice. So this is going to make its cut, and what's cool is I've got to stop here. So what I can do is set that so when I've gone my full travel, the machine will automatically shut down. So I don't have to sit here and, and waste time. I can go to the other side. I can get more work done. Yeah. I can get it prepped. So once this is done cutting, I can come back over here, grab it, move on to my next, you know, wheel assembly and keep on going. How easy is that? Fast, keeps the bay going, you can do it right on the truck, go off and finish something else up. Yeah. Let's go get lunch. <laughs> All right, you can see the indicator there. Yeah. Pretty much right on zero. That little flutter is just vibration. So shut her down. Yeah, man. Pop this guy off to the other side. Got the high spots out. It's all smooth. None of that shutter. Perfect. All right, man. Good to go on those other sides? Yeah. 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 All right. You're going to handle those because you're good with brakes. I got to go pick up a buddy's Harley. We got some stuff to do it, too. So you get to go get the bike I and get I get to, to stay bike. here? Yeah. yeah, you're good with brakes. I'm good with bikes. That's how it works out. Apparently. All right. <laughs> at least we're going to have a Harley in the shop when we come back. Yeah. So you guys stick around. We'll be right back. Have fun. We've shown you how to apply the 3M Paint Defender Spray Film. Now we'll focus on spraying techniques to make your application a success. Attach the spray trigger to the can to give you better comfort and control. Three keys to success with Paint Defender Spray Film are distance, speed, and pattern. You're going to want to follow the contour of the hood by holding the can 6 to 8 inches away from the surface at all times. As you spray, count to about 2 seconds per foot. Applying half the hood should take about 6 seconds per pass. Don't start and stop. Spray in a continuous pattern, making three overlapping coats. You'll know if you've applied enough when it turns a milky white color. If anything, you'll want to go heavier because it will self-level. If you spray too light, it's harder to remove later. Now, let the hood dry for about four hours before you take it outside. This tip is brought to you by 3M Auto. Smarter solutions through science.
Just not feeling working on brakes today. All right, got the other end tight. Now you saw we were upgrading, you know, sort of the how we're machining the roller. So everything is nice and true. Well, we're gonna put new pads on it, but on top of that, we're gonna upgrade the brake hose as well. So instead of using the old OE style rubber hose, right? We get a lot of flex, so when you push that brake pedal, it swells. You don't get that performance feel. We're putting on stainless braided hose. Now, it doesn't look stainless because it's got a nice outer coating on it. Now, these from Crown Performance actually have five layers. So you can see the inner layer, Kevlar, stainless, and outer protective layer. Now, this is gonna be a nice, great construction, so we've got performance for a big, heavy truck with massive stopping power. This is all DOT approved, so we can do street driving, we can do off-road driving. Great way to upgrade while we're here. Now, one thing I did is I put the old pad you know, and caliper assembly back on temporarily just so it's fixed where I can pop these off. You know, you're gonna have leaks. I'm gonna get stuff everywhere. I don't wanna put on my new pads. So now I can do a quick spray, you know, get rid of some of that brake fluid that's leaked down. And from there, I'm ready to pull it apart and throw on our new Wagner thermal quiet pads. Now these are a great combination of, of features that you'll find in a pad. This is the IMI, it's integrally molded insulator. So this is your you know, damping plate, but it's sort of integrated so it's not shifting around on you, causing rattles and things like that. Now it's sort of laser profiled, so you've got the right profile of pad. You get even heat distribution. You don't get high and low spots from that thermal expansion. NVH problems. It's also got the new OE21 compound on it, which is sort of the ceramic. Ooh, I hear some good noises outside. This is ceramic, so you're gonna get low dusting, great stopping power. Yeah. Shut her down, man. I knew you were recording. <laughs> Sorry it took me so long. To yeah, get man. Back. Where you been, bro? Traffic, man. Traffic. Traffic. Yeah, All traffic. right. Must have been some pretty tough traffic, traffic just cruising around. So, anyway, we're gonna get these new Wagner pads put in here, get the assembly tightened up bleed the system. Now our buddy Darren can have real confidence out there hammering those brakes. Okay, so what keeps me out of the shop a little while? It's a Harley. <laughs> All right, and I do have something to do with it. An SNS air filter. We're gonna put it right here. It's called the Stealth. It's called the Stealth because you could run your old school stock sort of cover for it. They never know you have it, or you could run an Air One cover like we're gonna run on it. Simple to use, great little product. You pop it open, you see it's got this air cone in it here, directs, directs air smoothly into the carburetor or the EFI. And again, it's called the Stealth because it's gonna fit right underneath the stock cover. You can use this old cover or you can go with the Air One like we have. So really simple to put on, easy DIY project, and we'll get hopping on this and I can get back on the Harley. Okay, it's just that easy from SNS Cycle. Their Stealth One air filter kit. More air equals more power and more time on the bike. Now, if you haven't noticed, around the shop, we've got some serious upgrades lately. This is the full setup from Moduline. Now, these are fantastic. These are high end, industrial grade, but designer looking cabinetry. Now, this is all aluminum construction, so it won't corrode or rust. It's real lightweight stuff, so you can take it from the shop, put it in your race car trailer, but it's all double wall construction, full hinges, so you've got everything you need for that durability, but you've got great functionality. You can set the drawers up any way you want. Check out this sort of quick draw system. One finger slides, really neat stuff, all American made, lifetime warranty. Set up the shop any way you want. Check them out at Moduline. Hey, welcome to today's tech tip. It's about reman versus rebuilt engines. Now, a rebuilt engine is typically gonna tear an engine down and just replace the one or two problem areas. Maybe you had a collapsed you know, top land or bad ring, so just that one location, maybe two, would get fixed and then put back together. Well, it doesn't necessarily address the whole engine and it doesn't make it like new. A reman engine or remanufactured engine will tear the engine completely apart, remachine all the heavy castings, hone the cylinders, deck the cylinder heads, 
and it'll put in a lot of new parts, anything that would wear or have age to it, all new pistons, gaskets, bearings, etc. So you know when you do a reman like ATK engines, it's going to be like it came from the factory and give you long, dependable service life. Now ATK has 40,000 applications, so you know they got what you need. They have 13 warehouses across the country, so you know you can get it fast. Now what's also cool, they have a three-year unlimited mileage warranty, so you can pop that sucker in and immediately go hammer on it, put a lot of miles on it, know you've got confidence. So check them out at Federated Auto Parts, ask for them by name, ATK Reman Engines, they'll hook you up. All right, from me, Mojo, it's style and protection with an attitude for all your Apple devices, whether it's the 4, the 5 or 5S, the iPad, and the new iPad Air. Now, when we say protection, we mean it. It's billet aluminum, and your device never actually touches the aluminum because it rides on this inner lining of polymer. So it never touches aluminum. You don't have that abrasive, but you have all that protection. It's made right here in North America. And the cool thing with the iPad or the iPad Air one, you get a kickstand. Anything with a kickstand is cool in my book. So for me, Mojo is protection for all your Apple devices. Okay, guys, you're going to find this hard to believe, but a lot of my friends don't hang out with me because of my keen sense of fashion, witty charm. <clears throat> they hang out with me because they want to use my car lift. Now, that all may change pretty fast because Rangers came out with a system they call Quick Jack, and this thing is bomb. All right, it handles anything from 3,500 to 5,000 pound capacity. These things actually collapse down, so it's super low profile, three inches. All right, you just slide these guys with these right here between the front and rear tires, set it up. You got your blocks of cushion to frame. Everything's quick disconnect, so simple, easy, lightweight. It comes with 110 or even a 12 volt system. So it's from Ranger Products. It's called the Quick Jack System, and it makes jacking up your car simple, easy, and safe. All right, we moved around on the bike for a little bit, but we've got to get back to a little bit of maintenance on the truck. But while we're here, I'm going to show you some of the cool technologies, one of which is the fuel system. We've made huge strides. Now, there used to be a Huey injector in the old 6-liter and 7.3 engines on these Fords. Well, the Huey was, you know, it's a hydraulically actuated injector. So on the one end was actually, a, you know, an oil pump, a high-pressure oil pump and it would drive sort of an intensifier piston which would then drive the fuel into the engine up to about 21,000 PSI. Well the spool valve used to do the control once it got hot really heavy hard working conditions you get oil coking and that spool valve would stick and start to slow down or be unresponsive so you'd end up with all kinds of hesitation, black smoke, loss of performance or even a failed injector. So one way to solve that was to replace the injectors. Another way to do it is a lot of aftermarket options like Hot Shot Secrets. This is the Stiction Eliminator. What's cool about that is by running it in your oil system along with your oil, it's got the right detergents and other things in there to break down a lot of that coking, get those injectors running again. So if you've got a problem with one of the older engines, don't replace the parts yet. Try something like this, let it run through and see if you can get the life back in it, and then run it you know, continually to make sure you don't have those problems in the future. Now what's cool about these new piezo injectors, this is a piezo stack in here, these piezo crystals. When you energize them, they'll expand and contract and that's what's actually opening the needle instead of that high pressure oil. It's really cool because not only can you counteract that 30,000 PSI of fuel pressure to open and close, you can do it really rapidly so you can get multiple shots per cycle. So you can do a pilot injection, you can do a main injection, you can even do post injections. Pretty neat stuff. But even these little guys, you know, these little holes and things are an issue with, you know, a fuel system. So you want to make sure you properly maintain that as well. So Hot Shot Secret also has the Diesel Extreme for your fuel system. So that's going to clean your whole fuel system out. It's going to upgrade the cetane about five to six points, improve cold starting and performance, and make sure all these little parts here are nice and clean so you get the right fuel pattern for the right injection. So I'm going to top this guy off, let it run through. We'll do our little maintenance here. This thing will be ready to kick down the road here pretty shortly. For more information about anything you've seen in today's show, check out MavTV.com or visit our website at TwoGuysGarage.com. Hey, welcome back. And we got our killer F-250 in the shop, doing a lot of maintenance work on it. We did a whole brake job on it, but instead of taking the rotors off, putting them on a lathe and turning them, 
put the lathe on the car, on the assembly, got everything nice and true, got new pads on there, new stainless braided lines. So that's all set. We're doing a few other maintenance items on here. Now, one of the things I want to show you was a little tech tip on how to get the most out of your battery because they're getting really expensive. So you don't even notice it sometimes. Occasionally you'll see a battery with a lot of corrosion on the terminals, but there's a lot of damage going on kind of behind the scenes. So we got a cleaner from CRC. Now this is their battery cleaner. Now it's pretty cool stuff. If I spray it kind of out here on the outside, you can see it's sort of a yellowy foam. But if I get kind of on the terminals, you can see it turning pink. Now that's attacking the acid and neutralizing it. And that acid is what's kind of eating off the terminal, starting corrosion, resistance, so you're not getting the cranking amps out of it, you're straining the battery. So what you want to do is, you know, spray it around the areas. You can see the pink stuff. Get your little scrubby out. You can pop your terminals off. Make sure you knock off all the corrosion, all the pinky stuff. Get up underneath there. And when you're all said and done, you know, you want to get behind the scenes. When you're all said and done, just come back, give it a little bath, wash it off, nice and clean. You'll towel dry it. And then once you put the terminals back on, you can come back with the battery terminal protection. A little spray on there will keep it nice and protected for a long time to come. And when the pink fades, you know it's time to go back and check and re-clean it. Oh yeah. What's we'll talking about, bro? How's the uh, CRC battery protector doing? Come on over here, I'll show you. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I gotta take this thing for a test drive. Test drive? What yeah, for? I'll put an air filter on it. You know, we test everything well, at least once, Dude. twice if it's really fun. It's an air filter, you don't need a test drive that. Air filter, I gotta test drive it. You know, we're gone sure. half the day just getting yeah, that what? bike. Can't hear you. Come on, man. Test drive. Oh, come on. All right, well, apparently Willie's going for a test drive, and I'm about there myself. So I'm gonna wrap this up. We're out of time. We'll see you guys next week.